What's up, what's up, guys? It's Reptil here again with another DIY video. And today, I'm going to be showing you the entire process of making your own vest. We're going to be covering everything you need to know and everything that I know. I have over 15 years of experience uh, making these bad boys, so I'm going to show you a thing or two about them. Now, whether you want to make a punk vest, a thrash metal vest, a heavy metal cut, or hey, maybe you're one of those nerds that uses the phrase battle vest. Hey, you could even make a vest for your cat. It doesn't matter at all, because everything that I'm going to show you, every method that I'm going to show you, yeah, you could just make whatever kind of vest you want, okay? It all works the same in the end, and there's a lot of information to cover. We are going to be talking about patches, more importantly, how to properly hand sew patches. I'm also going to be showing you this cool way that I know to turn your patches into uh, secret pockets where you can um, hide uh, hide your things. We are also going to be covering studs and how to stud a jacket and how to make a cool little stud punching tool. We are also going to be talking about spikes as well. And I'm going to show you guys how to line your jacket. A really fast and easy way so your studs and spikes don't fall out. And to finish it off, we are going to be talking about buttons and how to keep them on your jacket and not falling off in the mosh pit. Speaking of buttons, go ahead and click that subscribe button and uh, follow my channel. Especially if you're one of these uh, DIY punk rock nerds. Maybe you're into heavy metal and you just want to learn a few things. I don't know. Maybe you just want to get your DIY on and, well, you're at the right place. So anyway, enough talking. Let's get this started. <laughs> Alright guys, so first things first, um, throughout this video I will be referencing previous videos where I go more in depth. Those videos will be in the description below. And I'm also going to be timestamping the video if you just want to watch the video for certain sections. The timestamps will be below as well as any other information you might need. Alright, so here is our denim jacket. I have uh, two previous videos where I show you how to paint your jacket. Yes, you can paint denim jackets. Most people do not know that. The acrylic paint does stay on it. It does not come off, and it's just a really neat way. Check out those videos if you're into that. But anyway, let's start this jacket, this vest project, I guess you'd say. We're going to get some scissors, and we're going to cut the sleeves off. Now, when you cut the sleeves off, you want to make sure that you cut it on the outside of the seam, not the inside of the seam. Also, I see some people who cut the collars off their vests. Uh, same thing. Make sure you cut on the outside of that seam. If you cut on the inside, your jacket's just going to be fucking toast. Your vest is going to be toast, I guess I should say. So yeah, cut on the outside of that seam. Here we are. The outside of this seam has been cut. And I'm going to keep my collars on my jacket. Uh, here's my sleeves. Now, you can save the sleeves. Um, extra sleeves do come in handy if you ever need to, like, sew up a pair of pants. They ripped. It's just nice to have some extra fabric. You can also use the sleeves to line the jacket, which I'll be showing you how to do at the end. You can also get a zipper, or two zippers, I guess, and you can uh, sew the zippers on so you can have removable sleeves. Now, I'm not going to do that with this video, but it is an option if you want to have a zip-on, zip-off sleeves for your vest. So let's talk about patches. Um, you can get patches pretty much anywhere. I have two videos down in the description showing you how to make patches without any artistic ability required. Those are really easy ways to make patches. You get patches at shows, you can get them online, or wherever you want. Now, along with your patches, you're also going to need some safety pins, a pair of scissors, and you're going to need some dental floss or thread. I like to use dental floss. It's extremely strong. There is other synthetic thread out there that you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to use dental floss. It's just uh, it's just what I do. So here we are. We have uh, my vest. As you can see, I tried to paint on an engine logo for any of you Jurassic Park fans out there. It did not turn out very well, so I'm just going to sew a patch over it. I have this badass NFC patch right here. And pretty much when you do your patches, especially back patches, you're going to want to make sure they are even even on your jacket, and you're also going to take the patches, this is an important step, you're going to take the patches and you're going to fold them in. Okay, I think you just saw how the patch was folded in. When the patch is folded in, it makes it so it doesn't fray once it's sewed on. 
So our next step is we are going to take our safety pins and we're just going to tack it on. You don't necessarily need to close the safety pins. I like them to put them all in the same direction and just have it tacked on nice and tight, okay? This is the, for the next step, we're gonna start sewing. All right, all right. So I am not a seamstress, as you could probably tell, but I'm gonna show you how I thread my sewing needle with floss. You're gonna wanna take about like two to three arm lengths of your floss or thread, whatever you wanna use, and you're gonna run it through your needle. You're gonna take your needle and you're gonna run it about halfway through the thread. All right, does that make sense? See, it's halfway through the thread right now. You're gonna to wanna to take the ends of your thread and you're gonna to wanna to double knot it at the end, all nice and tight, and then double knot it again so it's nice and tight. You want it tighter than a crab's asshole. Now, this method of doubling up your thread or floss actually makes your sewing stronger instead of just sewing with a single strand of thread. So just so you know, this is why I'm doing it. So now we're gonna start sewing our patch. We're gonna start in one corner and we're just gonna run our needle underneath and out right on the edge of that seam you can see right there we're going to run it around and we're going to catch it and pull it tight okay you'll see what i mean see we caught it or we ran it under we caught it now we're going to pull it nice and tight there we go we're going to take our excess thread from that knot pull it out of the way and then we're going to run it through and do it again all right so now that we got our thread nice and anchored and tighter than a nun we're, we're going to start sewing this. All right, so this is my method of sewing. You're going to want to start over, then come under, and then go over again. Now, this doesn't make that much sense um, with me saying it. I drew a little bit of a description over there in the corner. And once you start doing it, it will make sense. It will absolutely make sense once you start. But you're going to want to run it over. You want to catch it under, then over again. All right. Um, the best advice I can give you is just get in there and practice and just try it, okay? All right. As you can see, that's what it's going to look like all the way around. Once you get in there, you'll understand. Now, here's another piece of advice that you need to know when you're sewing. At least I find that it helps me. Whatever your dominant hand is, you're going to want to work with that hand in the opposite direction. I'm a right-handed person. So I'm going to be sewing with my right hand towards my left. You are also going to want to keep your thread and you're stitching nice and even the entire length, even width-wise and um, the, the length-wise as well. You just want it nice and even as you go along. You don't want to look like shit. Or hey, uh, maybe you do want it to look like shit. But anyway, let's continue on. Eventually, you're going to run out of uh, thread or floss, whatever you're using. And at that point, you're just going to want to run. You're just going to want to run a normal stitch, but just tie it off at the end. And you just want to do it again and double knot it off. There's our double knot. And then we're just going to cut it off. We are going to leave a little bit of a hangover. Um, just a little bit if you're using floss. I'll show you how to take care of that at the end. We're on to our um, more sewing. Yeah, how fun. We're just going to do exactly the first step of uh, threading our needle with floss. And just continue what I showed you. And there we go, our beautiful inepsy patch. Nice and sewed on. See how even the threading is? The stitch work, I guess you'd say. Nice and even. Beautiful. All right, so we got those extra hanging little bits. Don't worry about that. Like I said, I will show you how to take care of those here in a second. So let's move on to our next patch. It's this handmade Toxic Holocaust patch. We're going to center it on the jacket, fold over the edges, safety pin it on, and then we're going to sew it on just like that. Boom, bada, boom, looking good. And yeah, that's pretty much it for someone, guys. There's not much else I can show you. Um, oh yeah, except for that last step. If you're using floss, you can go ahead and uh, take a lighter and melt the floss. Or you can just cut the floss if you want. I like to burn shit, though. Like, it's just, I don't know, something in me. Anyway, when you burn it, it makes sure that your uh, floss is not going anywhere. Because this is just uh, synthetic plastic. It just melts it. Psh, look at that. It's satisfying. All right, next, next section. All right. So let's talk about patches on the front of your vest. Um, you're going to sew them on exactly the same way as you sew on the back patches. The only thing to keep in mind when sewing patches on the front is that you have multiple pockets on your vest. I um, actually have a video about sewing uh, patched pants where I show you how to keep pockets open. It's pretty simple. All you do is find an object that fits inside the pocket, put the object inside the pocket, and then sew around it or on top of it. That way you don't sew your pockets shut, 
All right, you dummy, don't sew those pockets shut. And for this example, I'm literally just using the box that my floss came in. Whatever fits in the pockets works, okay? You just don't want to sew the pockets shut. And, oh, wow, look at that was some fast sewing right there. Yeah, it looks fantastic. All done. My pockets are nice and open and happy and ready to be stuffed with um, things. Oh, speaking of things, we will uh, get to those things in one second. Uh, but don't forget, you got to melt your edges. So, yeah, just same step as before. Just get a lighter and just uh, just melt those edges. If you're using floss, if you're using thread, just make sure it's really tight and cut it off. But, you know, you know me. I like to burn shit. All right, kids, here's some ancient knowledge I probably should not be sharing with you. But this is called a fake pocket or a fake patch pocket. Actually, I don't even think there's a name for it. I just do this to hide my things, as you can see. Beans. Yeah, there's beans in there, officer. Anyway, it's a really cool way to hide beans in your uh, jacket. So you just want to take your patch. You're going to want to tack it on just like normal. And since this is going to be on the front of our uh, vest, you're going to just want to make sure that you don't accidentally sew the inside pocket. But the whole concept here is that you're only going to sew three edges of your patch and the top edge of your patch is going to be a fake stitch, like a fake seam. So it looks like it's actually sewed to your uh, vest, but it's not. So here is our three real seams, and our next step is just to sew a fake seam. We're going to keep that pocket open with this little piece of cardboard, and we're just going to sew a fake seam. I think you understand what I mean. It's not actually going to go all the way through the patch into the vest. It's just going to wrap around on top of the patch. And there you go. That's what it's going to look like. It looks like it's a patch, but hey, it's a pocket. Fantastic. Drugs are bad, kids. But anyway, that's that's pretty much it. There is a cool way to hide your beans um, when you're on the go doing uh, your uh, less than fruitful activities with your friends. All right. Next step of the video. Wow. Huh? A lot of people don't realize this, but you can put your weed in there. Oh, this is great. Fantastic. So we have our patches sewn onto our vest. If that is all you want to do, then I guess the video is over for you. You don't necessarily need to do anything else, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to apply studs. I'm also going to be going over spikes. Now, guys, I do have a previous video called How to Stud a Leather Jacket or something of that nonsense. So it will be in the description below. But I really ramble on I'm, I'm a lot more than I ramble on in this video just about how to stud a leather jacket. And uh, studying a leather jacket and studying a denim jacket are very similar. There is some subtle differences. But yeah, if you want to go down a wormhole, check out that video. But anyway, let's talk about studs. I get my studs from studsandspikes.com. It's the best quality studs and spikes. If you live in North America, I would highly recommend it. Link will be in the description. We are going to be using half-inch cone studs and half-inch English Tall 77 studs. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of studs that you can buy. But uh, for this video, I'm just going to be sticking with these two kinds of studs. Now, along with studs, you're also going to need a nice pair of needle nose pliers. Don't be a fucking hardhead and use your fingers like a dumbass. Uh, just get some needle nose pliers. They're actually free at the dollar store if you don't get caught. Um, but besides the needle nose pliers, you also might need this little guy. I call him a stud punching tool. I'm going to show you how to make him right now. So this is the stud punching tool. It is essentially a crude instrument um, comprising of a base, two X-Acto blades, and some tape. And it allows you to punch through thick material. Uh, preferably, I use it on a leather jacket. But on a denim a denim vest, denim jacket, you're only going to want to use it on thick pieces like your collar. Okay, don't use it on the like just your sleeves or like your other parts of the jacket or vest where the denim's thin because it's just going to shred the fuck out of it. And you don't want that. Only use this uh, stud punch on the collar of a denim jacket and like similarly thick pieces that are a pain in the ass. So first things first, uh, you're going to need some X-Acto blades, some tape. I use electrical tape and you're going to need a base or a handle. Now you want your base or handle 
to be the same diameter as whatever size stud that you were using. Now I am using these half inch studs. Uh, both of my studs are half inch in diameter. So I want my base to be half inch in diameter. Makes perfect sense. I know you guys are slow, but this is easy. Anyway, um, a Sharpie is half inch in diameter. So go ahead and just take a Sharpie, cut the top off, pull all that shit out, pull the guts out, and there you go. And you're going to want to take your X-Acto blades, and when you want to set them up, you want to make sure that they're not hanging off too far. If your blades are hanging too far off the front of your tool, you're gonna, like that, you're going to be poking massive holes in your, uh, in your material. You don't want that. You want them to only hang out as far as the stud prongs hang out. Does that make sense? It's kind of a rough visual right there, but you just want it to hang out as long as the stud prongs hang out. Okay. Any more, you're going to put holes in it. Any less, you're not going to be poking poking big enough holes. But anyway, get your bad boy all set up. And, uh, yep, you're going to make sure it's the same diameter. Make sure your blades are facing the same way. You're going to take your electrical tape, and you're just going to wrap it up. All right? Boom, baby. So we got our stud punch done. And just so you guys fully understand, you're only going to want to use this on thick parts of your denim, like the collar. Like I said, I make this for thick leather jackets, and it, it comes in handy with thick leather jackets, but it also comes in handy with thick parts of denim. Let's talk about stud theory. Now this is going to be a short, just a short little clip, but I'm just going to show you different stud patterns. I call this stud theory. What I'm showing you right now is called dense pattern studding. This is where they're very close and they interlock tightly. It almost looks like scale armor. I kind of use uh, this type of studding more for the upper parts of jackets. All right, this next studding that you're seeing right now in front of you is called loose pattern studding. This is really good for the sides of a vest or a jacket, or if you just don't have a lot of studs in general, you're going to want to use loose pattern studding. All right, this last studding I'm going to show you is called line studding. I use this to accentuate seams or even just to stud around patches. Yeah, line studding. All three of these are going to come in handy. And they're just uh, different methods of studying. All right, guys. A good question to think about is how many studs that you're going to put on your vest. And this entirely depends on how big you are. Obviously, a bigger person is going to need more studs to cover a larger surface area than a smaller person. Also, keep in mind that uh, punk jackets or punk vests usually have a lot more studs, whereas um, metal vests, metal jackets, they usually have little to no studs. Just something to keep in mind, you know, but there are no rules. Make what you want. Fuck the damn rules. Let's get some DIY going on here. So here's some examples. This right here is a heavily studded vest. This is anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 studs. This next one is a moderately studded vest. This is probably between 800 to 1,200. And this is a lightly studded vest. It's probably between five and 800 studs. Of course, those were all rough examples of the pictures that I could find, but anyway, Enough talking, let's get down to studying. So when you start studying, you're going to want to work work it one panel at a time. And you're going to want to start in one corner and work in a straight line over, okay? It's also important to keep your stud prongs completely straight in a line. Don't place them all haphazardly and crooked. You just want to make straight lines, okay? All right, so now we got our first stud placed right in the corner of that panel. And pretty much with this denim, when the, it's just regular like denim, you could just press it through. You don't need that stud that stud punch tool that I showed you. So press it in. You're going to press it through. You're going to see your little uh, prongs sticking through the other side. And then all you're going to do is take your needle nose pliers and you're just going to bend them in. Make sure you bend them nice and tight, okay? If they're loose, they're going to fall out. But just make sure they're nice and tight and snug, all right? All right, first stud, boom. Now we just uh, repeat that first step, and on this shoulder up here, I'm going to be doing the dense pattern studding. So I'm going to make it nice and tight and straight, and just do a straight line of studs all the way across that panel on my shoulder, okay? And there we go. We got our first line done. We are going to repeat the process, and it, there we go. See how I, those stud prongs are straight? That's what you want to go for. And like I said, when the stud prongs are straight, it's just going to make everything just fit nice and smoothly together. It's going to be nice and snug. It's just overall, the appearance is going to be a lot nicer than if you just randomly throw the shit on there. But anyway, here's our second row. And yeah, this is pretty much it for studying. You're going to just want to keep doing that. And do you see how they interlock? It's kind of cool. So here we go. 
Now that is a nice stud job right there. I did the entire top shoulders with the, the dense pattern studding. It's uh, It turned out pretty good. And wow, wow, that's some fast stud work right there. You know, Reptile's got them magic fingers. But anyway, that's what the inside of uh, your vest is going to look like. See how all the prongs are nice and straight and in a line. It's, it's going to be much better in the end if you do it this way. But hey, what do I know? If you want your shit to look like some rebellious 8th grader who just discovered uh, Good Charlotte, uh, be my guest. But anyway, we're going to be doing some more close pattern studying on the back around my NFC patch. So let's uh, look at that. And boom, look at that. Nice. Wow, we are just cooking through this. But in real life, this is a very lengthy process, very time consuming. I love the magic of editing. As you can see, we did some more close pattern studying on the upper collar, on those um, pockets on the top. I just did some line studying just to accentuate those pockets right there. You can see I'm going to do some more close pattern studying on the upper uh, chest portion right here. Let's see what that looks like. Boom. And I am good at this. Like that was just fast. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just some line work studying. All right, I'm gonna do some line work studying around our Incarad patch right there and our Trioxin patch. Oof, right there. Very nice. Okay, so now we're going to do some more line work studying, and we're gonna be just accentuating the seams in those thick seams right here that I'm pointing at. I'm gonna do dense pattern. And then we're just going to do some more line work studying. All right, very nice. There we go. See, look how fast this is. All right, guys, I'm going to stop uh, complimenting myself. But yeah, it feels like I'm just giving myself a circle jerk over here. But anyway, you get the uh, you get the idea of all these different uh, stud patterns you can use. And I'm actually going to show you one more on these side side panels right here. We're going to be doing the loose pattern studying. All right, there's the, the loose pattern studying. That's pretty much it for the front. I do believe I'm going to go back and just do some um, do some nice close pattern studying just around the bottom of the vest in the front and the bottom. And we'll take it from there. Yeah, right. This section right there. That's what we're going to do next. Fantastic. There we go. We got the front and some dense pattern studying. There's the back with the dense pattern studying. And there's the front again. And you guys, this is pretty much it, you know. And like I said, you want your prongs to be uh, nice and even. Just take your time, you know. Like, if you're going to put the effort into looking like an absolute idiot, at least uh, put some time into it, making sure your gear is on point. All right? That's the only advice I can give you. But yeah, this is it for the studying. I am going to leave you with some nice prong porn over here. Like I said, it's very important that they are on point and straight. For your studs to interlock properly and your, your just stud work just to look smooth. So just remember that. Keep it in the back of your mind while you're doing all this shit. So yeah, our stud work is pretty much done. We're going to move on to the next section. Alright guys, we're going to talk about spikes real quick. Now, you can get your spikes on studsandspikes.com, obviously. There's all sorts of different sizes. I'm using this ridiculously large novelty size spike. Uh, just for the sake of a demonstration in this video, I'm not going to be putting spikes on my jacket, so this is just a demonstration video of what you can do. So yeah, spikes are typically screw back. You can get um, riveted on spikes, but I, I don't really don't mess with those, so I'm just using these screw back spikes. So you wanna use a screwdriver, you're going to get some Loctite or some sort of compound that's going to help you uh, keep your spike on the screw, but that is an option. You don't have to. And you could also get a washer, but that is an option also. And the washer kind of helps uh, your spike not wobble around as much on your jacket because spikes are kind of big and heavy and they flop around. It looks kind of dorky. So this washer will keep your spike anchored underneath your jacket. For the sake of the video, let's pretend this piece of fabric is my denim vest. I'm going to poke a hole in the denim fabric or in the denim vest and you don't want a big hole you just want a hole just big enough for that screw to fit nice and snugly in if the hole's too big you're gonna your spikes just gonna rip out so just a nice snug little hole <laughs> anyway we got our screw and our washer in we're gonna use our loctite compound or whatever you have we're gonna put it on the threads of our screw we're gonna take our spike we're gonna screw it on and the next step is we're going to take our screwdriver and just make sure it's nice and tight and just it's not going anywhere, okay? Now, guys, I, I did say that this Loctite compound is optional. You don't have to do that. It just helps your spikes not fall off. And the washer is optional. Um, that just keeps your spikes anchored and not flopping around. 
you don't necessarily need those two things, but it does help in the long run, and it's something that I use when I do use spikes. Here we go. This is the end result, and like I said, this is just an example because I'm not putting spikes on this specific vest. So yeah, that's what it's going to look like. Perfect. Not much else to show you guys. Alright guys, so this is an optional step as well. This is something I do, and I pretty much just line my jacket with fabric. At this point, if you've kept your fabric sleeves, uh, they come in handy right now. If not, you can use a bandana or whatever fabric that you have. I'm going to be using a bandana. But the point of this is um, with heavily studded jackets, they tend to wear over time. The denim will rip and shred. So this will actually help keep it all together when you're done studying. And like I said, it's not necessary. It's just something I do, especially with these heavily studded uh, vests. So all you're going to need for this is some shoe glue and your fabric. Like I said, you can use the sleeves from your vest. I'm going to be using a bandana. So the first step is to flip your vest inside out, make it nice and smooth. Let's uh, take our fabric. We're going to cut the fabric. And honestly, I'm only going to be doing the uh, top part of the vest, like up on the shoulders. I'm not going to be doing the whole thing. You can do the whole thing if you want to, but I'm just mainly worried about right there on the shoulders because that's where a lot of the weight and the tension is going to sit on the vest where over time it might shred. All right, so I'm gonna take my bandana and I'm gonna cut it up into the the right size of the panels. And I just kind of, I'm just gonna just eyeball it and cut it, you know, and then I'm gonna take my shoe glue. I'm gonna go in, you can use a sponge brush. Honestly, like halfway through, I just used my fingers because the sponge brush fell apart. But you just wanna really get that shoe glue in there, like nice and good, boy. Just get it in there, and especially on those seams, okay? Work those seams, baby. There we go. We got our shoe glue. We're all glue headed out, and then we're just going to lay our fabric down. And honestly, I'm doing this uh, one, one panel at a time. I'm doing the sh back shoulders first, but I'm done with that. I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to do the front, front shoulders. But here we go. We got our bandana down. It's nice and tight. We're going to sit it on there, and then you, you can trim it up at this point if you want to. And yeah, just trim it up, and then we're, let's go to the front. All right, it's all trimmed up, so now we're going to go to the front. All right, so we flipped our vest inside out, and I'm just laying it down to make it easier. As you can see, I could trim it a little bit more right there, but I'm just going to go back with our shoe glue. We're just pretty much just going to do the same exact step. I have my, my bandana cut out to size. We're going to put the shoe glue on it, and then we're going to put the bandana on it, all right? There's that shoe glue, and like I said, work those seams, baby work them seams but yeah and we're just gonna set the bandana down and that's pretty much it fantastic it looks beautiful and yeah we got the bandana set we're gonna trim it a little bit but there's something else you can do you can uh put it between two pieces of cardboard and make sure it's inside out still put it between two pieces of cardboard put something heavy on it and let it sit overnight so that bastard just really sticks all right nice and tight boom baby we got it this is what the liner looks like it isn't perfect, but it will work, and it will stop your jacket from shredding. I know there's going to be some neckbeard in the comments who makes professional lined motorcycle jackets telling me how I'm not doing this properly, and, well, sir, you can eat my asshole. Um, this is called Reptile DIY, not Reptile Sells Rich Urban Bikers Bandana Lined Vests. So die mad about it. But anyway, guys, let's go on to the next step. We're going to be talking about buttons we're about to wrap this video up buttons are pretty simple you stick them on your vest they fall off you lose them uh this is a good way to make sure you don't lose them just take a hot glue gun and just open up them fucking sons of bitches and just melt some hot glue on the inside all right this is what it's going to look like take the hot glue gun and you're just going to do a little squeezy right inside you know where that lip is yeah you know where the lip is and squeeze and there you go make sure it's a uh, nice and full Fill her up, boy. Fill her up. And that's pretty much it. You know, that's all we're going to do. We're going to let it uh, let it cool off. Then you just go back and pull off all the little fuzzies. And your buttons should be pretty much set. And they should not be going anywhere in any of your uh, drunken, rambling states in a mosh pit. So there you go. Thank you, Reptile. So the buttons are done. The studs are done. The patches are done. We're pretty much done. Now the only thing left to do is wear the damn thing. And, you know, I can't do that for you. But hey, we are all done here, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you have learned something. And yeah, there's quite a lot to learn. This is a pretty basic jacket. 
um, but I just covered a lot of bases. Hopefully you walked away with uh, some information. If you liked this video, uh, subscribe to my channel, of course, but uh, leave some comments. Tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what I did right. And honestly, tell me some more things to make, whether that is vests, jackets, leather gear. I don't know. Just let me know. Also, feel free to hit me up and uh, ask any questions that you might have. I probably have an answer. Ah! That's fucking